knows. Uh, Father, we just thank you of an opportunity. Yes, Lord. You give us this opportunity to come together here tonight. Yes, we pray Lord. that you minister to the needs of the people. Lord, comfort those, uh, uh, comfort us as we've lost a loved one that, that involved the church. I pray for yes, those that are not here. Uh, hold each other up before your throne, Lord, and ask you for your divine favor for everyone. I pray that you'd uh, open up our eyes to see the time we're living in. Lord, I pray you'd send protective angels over the church, over the body of Christ. Lord, uh, those that are not saved, sanctified, and um, born into the kingdom, Lord, I pray that you prepare their hearts that they will receive Christ as their Savior before it's everlasting too late. And Lord, everlasting too late's coming real quick. We just pray that you'd minister to us strength, wisdom, and understanding. Prepare us for the journey ahead of us, and we'll give you the glory for it. Pray for Tracy's uncle, uh, that you'd help him in these times. I pray you give him sound mind, heal his body. We'll give you the praise for it. Lord, you know our needs. I pray for uh, every single one of them. Lord, mostly the lost and the sick. Lord, we, we know that your uh, creative power is able to heal the sick and, and even raise the dead. We give you the glory for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Will I follow close behind her Hold my head up and try to be brave For the good night Hide my sorrow and they laid her in the grave. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Here comes the third part, ready? Walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. Walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around. Walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, at least some of us showed up for church. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love that. Amen. God's good. He's always good. We're going to keep on loving Him. Praise the Lord. Gonna trade our sorrows. Amen. I love playing this song. Because it's good for any time. Amen. And we really need it right now. Well, I'm treating my sorrow. Well, I'm treating my shame. Well, I'm laying them down. For the joy of the Lord well, I'm treating my sickness well, I'm treating my pain well, I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord Yes, Lord And I say, yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm pressed but not cursed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, oh, his promise will endure. And his joy is going to be my strength. Thank you, Lord. Though my sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm treating my sorrow. Well, I'm treating my shame. 
I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm treating my sickness. I'm treating my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, here we go. And I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm pressed but not cursed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, but it's promised will endure, and it's joy is gonna be my strength. Though my sorrow may last for the night, it's joy comes in the morning, yeah, yeah. I'm treading my sorrow, I'm treading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Let's la la la. Here we go. La 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 Thank you for the cheering section over here. Praise the Lord. God's good. Yeah, yeah. See, you don't clap for me. You clap for Jesus. Amen. Clap for the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, I'm not worth two pennies. I ain't, I ain't worth clapping for, but my Lord is. So praise God. So, so every time you clap, just be knowing that you're clapping in the presence of the Lord. Because God says we're two or more gathered. There he is in the middle. So there's more than two of us here. Amen. This is just about my favorite song, amen. So, hope it blesses you like it blesses me. Nothing can separate us Even if I run away Cause your love never fails Thank you, Lord I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercy for me every day Cause your love never fails Thank you, Jesus. Because you stay the same. Because you stay the same through the ages. Because your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never fails Your love, it never, ever fails The wind is strong and the water's deep, but I'm not alone here in this open sea, cause your love never 
never fail The chasm is far too wide and I never thought I'd reach the other side Cause your love never fails Thank you Lord Cause you stay the same Cause you stay the same through the ages Cause your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me Your love never fails Your love, your love, it never fails Cause you made all things work together for my good yes you do lord because you made all things work together for my good because you made all things work together for my good because you made all things work together for my good Cause you stay, cause you stay the same through the ages. Cause your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me Your love never fails Your love, your love, it never fails My Lord, your love, your love never fails What can you only imagine? What? <laughs> I know it's just one of them. I can only imagine what it would be like when I'm walking there, walking by your side. I can only imagine. Oh yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart be? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I love you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, 
yeah. I can only imagine, yeah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart be? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will oh, all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart be? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and now of you be still. Will I stand in your presence? Will to my knees will I bow? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine, All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I miss Donna being here on Wednesday night. She usually takes care of this for me. And uh, I don't have to worry about studying for a second word, of course. I got all kinds of the words. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, these are peculiar times that we're living in. You know, I don't know it's, if it's ever been this way that the whole world's been shut down like this. Uh, in any any age at all that, that it's happened in this manner and you know, it's impossible to me for, for what's going on to happen. But, uh, you know, it's undeniable that the world is shut down. We, uh, you know, we're uh, gathering. We've got a choice, you know, whether we, um, you know, if we obey the law of the land, you know, we, and, and we are, we're gathering, you know, a small amount of people and we're social distancing for the most part. And, and the word that we put out is if you've got a sniffle, if you've got a suspicion of a cold, stay at home, don't come. Right. You know, we don't want nobody spreading nothing. We want to be healthy, but we got to, I mean, we got to obey God. Right. Amen. I mean, uh, in Acts chapter Three and four, when when Peter, Jane, Peter and John came to the to the temple and saw a lame man at the at the gate, beautiful, into the temple on the day of prayer, you know, uh, he was looking to have them give him something, you know, some tangible something. And Peter looked on him and said, "Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus." And took him by the hand, and he leaped up. I mean, and he'd been lame from his birth. You know, the Pharisees and scribes brought on his parents and said, said is, is this your son and, and everything? And he said, well, he's, he's of age, ask him. <laughs> you know, praise the Lord because it's against the law to, to, to perform healing and all that stuff on, on the Lord's day because the Lord most of the time done all the things that he he done on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. I don't know is that is that still loud enough? Is that still loud enough? Can you hear it, Brian on them headset coming in the camera? 
I want you to, if you want to, I'm going to play it on the, on the screen, uh, but we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10. You know, Hebrews chapter 10 is, uh, uh, you know, the, it's an inspirational book, Hebrews is. I mean, uh, most people agree that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews because the last verses of it says that, that uh, Timothy and, uh, and I was a recipient of it. And so uh, most people understand that it was by Paul, but Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I, I didn't really realize, you know, we've made jokes about it and everything. Me and Pastor Frey, because he's a coffee freak uh, nut. He's a coffee nut. I'll say it that way, he's a freak. <laughs> He's a coffee nut. He, he likes Vienna coffee, and he likes Ethiopian, and got me on Ethiopian Vienna coffee, too. It's strong. <laughs> but, uh, and we'd say, well, Hebrews, well, you know what Hebrews means? Hebrews means crossing over. It means they crossed over. And so the Hebrews, the Jews, took on that, that title after they crossed over the Red Sea. Nowhere in Scripture until after that they were referred to as the Hebrews because Hebrews means those that cross over. Well, then you have Noah, and, and they crossed over from a fallen world to a new, new world. And the boat, the Noah's Ark, landed on Mount Arad in Turkey. And that's where they came off on dry land and Mount Arad means reverse the curse. So they crossed over to, re to reverse the curse. And here the Jews passed uh, through the Red Sea to reverse slavery and captivity. And they came into the promised land, but not until they'd been tested for 40 years. <clears throat> you know... If you just read the stories of the Bible, you, you think, well, it's a good story. You know, but if you understand God and have a relationship with God, he knows all things. So he knew exactly what was going to happen before he ever, before it ever happened. So uh, he, knows what, he knows exactly what's going to happen in our day, too. And in Hebrews, he refers to our day. In uh, Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 22, it says that, that almost nothing is, uh, let me just read it. I don't want to misquote it. 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. <coughs> That's pretty plain, isn't it? I mean, uh, if you go on up into chapter 9, it talks about uh, a, a testament and, and a testator, has to, uh, a person that, that has given a last will and testament. It's no good. It's just a record or a document until the person passes away. So it refers to that in verse 17. Uh, and verse 18, therefore, neither the first testament was uh, dedicated without blood. I mean, it was dedicated by Moses dedicating, Abraham dedicating the testament of God, the covenant of God, by blood, blood animals. But you see, we've got a greater, we've got a greater covenant because it's, it is sealed and it's, uh, it's honored by God's own blood. Man couldn't seal it. It's a better testimony, but it had to be, it had to be played out through, through eternity, through, through the, the, the creation of Adam and Eve, the first three, three days, I mean the first seven days of creation listed in Genesis 1 and 2. I mean, he knew exactly what the eighth day was going to uh, entail. He knew exactly what it was going to entail. And he gives us the opportunity to, to uh, 
enter into this eternal walk with him at our appointed time. At our appointed time. And I believe that he saved the best for last. I believe he saved the best for last. But by the blood of Jesus Christ and his substitute sacrifice for our penalty, we say we're born again. But are we born again? Have we shook off the world? Huh? I mean, all through the Bible you have, you have people that are blessed of God and God comes upon them and and they, they prosper and everything, and then they fall away. Most of them start good. Biggest part of them end bad. I mean, you had David, a man after God's own heart, and we have his, his uh, testimony written down plain. I mean, he went against God when God told him not to number the people, that the, the number of the people was in God's court, not David. We're not trying to, to uh, be uh, stars or anything else. We're just trying to preach the gospel and teach people that this is the day of the Lord. This is the most important time in history. You don't feel like it? I mean, this is the most important time in history. I am the worst speller that you'd ever meet. Once I looked at it again, I know I spelled it wrong, and I might say it wrong if I don't correct it there. I want to uh, play, because they can read it in just a minute, a few minutes. I want to play on the, on the Internet uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Chapter 10. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins? But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldst not, neither hast pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. That already gets you excited. Now where right remission there. of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, 
by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of... That right there, Hebrews 10, 20, that's what this picture is. Hebrews 10, 20. It says, by a new and living way. You see his flesh is hanging there on the cross. You see that picture of Jesus hanging on the cross. The two, two uh, uh, malefactors or thieves were hanging on each side of him there, and they took them down. And so here this is fulfilled 2,000 years ago. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated consecrated made it available purchasable by our obedience you can't obey something you don't know nothing about or understand if you're caught up in this world you see unrighteous relationships with the world will keep you bound to the world. You see, Jesus never had an unrighteous relationship in the world. He was all man, but he was all God. His flesh, man, paid the sin debt. The sins of the world, my sins, your sins, was placed on Jesus' suffering body just before he said it's finished. So he suffered the death that you and I are suffered. But he says that he'll remember our sins no more. Amen. Right here in chapter 10 of Hebrews. And like I said, Hebrews means passing over. Those that pass over. But you can't wait till you are till you quit breathing in this body. You can't wait till then and pass over. You've got to be a living sacrifice and pass over and get rid of the unrighteous relationships with this world. I mean, this world will lie to you. It will pump you, pump you up with uh, $1,200 gifts in, the, in your <laughs> checking accounts. It'll do all these things to make you uh, to make you think that the world's on your side and the world is not on your side. The world is not on your side. And let me tell you, most people are not on your side either. Everybody that you run into may not be human. I'm telling you, these days are like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah... The fallen angels, the 200 angels left their former estate, had, had uh, crossed over all the DNAs of every, everything that was created by God, and they're doing it again. They're doing it again. I mean, it ain't been five or six years ago some ungodly-looking creature floated up on the shores of of Long Beach in, in New York off of some island out on the sea where they've got these labs that they 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 play with DNA and make I mean they're they the, the, they're public with it. They're not hiding none of it. They're they're growing human organs and brains and pigs. I just heard a, a report that the that that they put DNA of a brain, a human brain in a rat to try to change the DNA of a rat to where he can communicate like a human. Now, they're doing those things again. And, and they're, they're not hiding it like they were before. They're not. I mean, verse 20 says, By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us the, through the veil. 
You see, when Jesus said it's finished, the veil in the temple rent from the top to the bottom. A foot thick veil rent from the top to the bottom. No one ever went behind that veil except once a year on the day of atonement for the sins of the nations. Yearly, one person had to sanctify himself. One priest had to sanctify himself with sacrifices to appease God for one year. That they might go in and offer sacrifice for the people. One person. And if God accepted the sacrifice, it pushed back judgment one year. And that was the process that, that God placed after the Jews came out of captivity in Egypt by Moses. And God gave Moses the law. The law was given to prove to man that nobody could justify themselves. It says if you're guilty of one sin, you're guilty of all of them. So it means you can't make it without Jesus. You can't, you can't get rid of the unholy relationships of the world. I mean, they, they engulf the whole world. <clears throat> they engulfed the whole world, and we're living in the last days. And, and Hebrews chapter 10 confirms what I'm telling you. It confirms what I'm telling you. You see, the flesh hung there on the cross, but God gave Jesus a glorified body coming out of the tomb. They buried the flesh, fleshly man, Jesus, in a tomb, and three days later, he came out of the tomb with a glorified body, Amen. the first fruits of the resurrection, Passover. You know, we've not been able to have an actual Passover this year. You know, I told you that I've got the two confirmations of the Enoch calendar, which shows that, that Passover, the, the 14th day of Nisan, was actually the 31st of March. Now, on the world's calendar, Passover was a week or two ago. So we've not been able to have what's called a Passover, even though we put the blood on the doors, on the doorpost. And I've asked people, I asked people last Sunday, I said, you need to build you an altar, a family altar, and pray to God that we might pass over this judgment that's coming on the world. And I've told people and told people, you know, the, <clears throat> the pictures of the end time are all through the Bible. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 10 is, the, is, the, is the, the Lord talking, Jesus talking, and he's given a scenario of ten virgins. Ten virgins, brides, waiting on the bridegroom to come. Ten of them. And the scripture in Matthew 25 says that every one went to sleep. Were they asleep snoring or were they just asleep to the reality that the world is, is, is just going on the way it would go on? I believe that, that they weren't necessarily asleep and I believe they just weren't prepared because they have unholy relationships with the world. That's where most people are now. They've got unholy relationships with the world and they want to be stars and they want to have a great following and they want to set themselves up on thrones instead of God on the throne of their heart and preach Jesus like he ought to be preached. The time that we're in is the last days. It may even be the last few weeks. It may even be the last few weeks, I'm telling you. I mean, if Jesus came within the next few weeks, would you be ready? I'm telling you, you can't have unholy relationships with the world and be ready. You've got to cut the ties with the things of the world and purify yourself by sanctifying yourself daily in prayer and, and calling upon the name of the Lord. You better make you an altar. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Faith. 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Do you hear what that said? You can't go to church now. You can't gather in church. You can't, you can't set aside a service for the Lord. But God's telling us, as you see the day approaching, he's not talking about in Jesus' day. He's not talking about a thousand years ago. He's not even talking about in, in, in Martin Luther's day. He's not even talking about uh, in the days that Israel became a nation again. He's talking about in the days right now that we're living in. He said, as you see the day approaching, fail not to assemble yourself. But the world is telling you, you can't assemble yourself. I mean, I just watched a thing on the news where they arrested a guy down in Louisiana for having church. Uh, and another guy in Florida because they had church. Because their law is greater than God's law, they think. Huh? I'm not telling you to do anything other than uh, prepare yourself. You don't have to stand elbow to elbow with me to make an altar for God because I can't save you. Huh? I can't save you, but I'm telling you what, you better get in line with Jesus Christ because he's the only one who can save you. I mean, you better start praying daily. Do you not fear hell? I fear hell. And I'm not going to go to hell for nothing. Nobody is nothing worth going to hell over. And I'm, gonna, I'm pr preparing myself that when the call comes, the bridegroom comes, Go out to meet him. I'm be ready to turn my lamp up and go out because I'm going to have to go back and get oil. Huh? I'm telling you, you better get rid of all the unholy alliances. I'm telling you one thing. You can't read the Bible yourself between now and then if you have never read it. This is the greatest tool that I've found. That right there is Bible Gateway Audio. You could put King James, you can go to any translation you want to, put the word, and it does it real simple. I mean, you can change the book right there. You can go to the book you want to go to, put hit it, and it goes right in that space. You can go to the, the, the translation you want to right there. You can even have certain ones read it to you. Max Leca Max Le <laughs> Max Lelon, or whatever his name is, right here, what is that name? McLean. Okay, you can go through all these names here. You can go to any, you can even go to Spanish right there. I mean, you can hear it in Spanish. There's no, there's no reason for you not, I mean, you could sit down with the Bible Gateway and hear the audio, and you could listen to it over and over and over again. I suggest if you had not never read the Bible, you better get this app. About every one of you got an iPhone. Pull it up there and start in Genesis and start listening because Genesis is 50 chapters. Genesis is 50 chapters. It has the creation story. It has the fall of man. It has the pathway back to God. All in 50 chapters. I'm telling you, it does. And then it goes into the deliverance and, and exodus, exodus of the world, exodus of slavery, exodus of captivity. There's a way that seems right to a man. That, and he thinks that you can watch soap operas and the, the, the Channel 10 news all the time and know what's going on. The Bible tells you what's going on. There's a world, there's a world out there that wants you to follow it. But there's a God that says, follow me. He says, because you are not people of darkness. If you're born of, of the Spirit of God, then uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, chapter 5 says, you know, those that are in darkness, the thing's going to come on them as a thief in the night. 
But then it goes on to say in the next couple of verses after 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, then it goes on to say, but you're not children of darkness. You're children of the light. And it's not going to come on you unaware because you're watching and waiting. And you see the time approaching. I've tried to tell people that we don't have time for the last 10 years. I've tried to people. Tell people we don't have time to play with our eternal destiny. I mean, if, 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 if you'd have gave your life to the Lord 10 years ago and got into where you need to be praying and fasting and seeking the Holy Spirit and hearing God receiving a renewing of your mind instead of thinking God's going to do it all for you, I mean, he, he's not going to do what you can do for yourself. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to activate your faith in God and, and, and hear his voice because it's out of time. And where the tree falls, it's going to lay. I mean, this is no game. It's no joke. It's nothing. It's no joke and uh, no relationship, no connection if you're doing it out in a whole, uh, in an unrighteous connection or tie to the world. It's going to take you to hell. I'm telling you. And it says, and, that, and they're coming now. Don't fellowship. Can't have church. Can't have church. I mean, uh, what did he just say? I, I'm telling you. I want a key on that just a minute. Verse 25. And the, and the last part of verse 25. And so much more. I mean, does that know what it says? I mean, you've been supposed to have been watching all along. Supposed to have been assuming yourselves all along. But it says, and so much more as you see. It don't say the year is coming, the year is approaching. It says the day. The day it's approaching. I've heard all that stuff. I've heard it from preachers. I was trying to tell uh, uh, a guy that, that used to be our pastor. I was trying to tell him that the signs and, the, and all the things there. The, I mean, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 says that Satan will think that he can change the times and the word. Huh? They found the Dead Sea Scrolls in 47. Two men that I, I've got record of their calendar that they worked out says that the, and, and Enoch, the second book of Enoch declares that spring equinox is the first day of Nisan. So they started their calendar on, on the spring equinox and, and calculated it out all the way through 30, 29 to 30 days a month. And then the leap month, there's an added month, a day in the month and got it all worked out there month by month. Date by date, event by event, God in Leviticus 23 told uh, uh, Moses and Aaron, said, tell the people that I'm a, making an appointment for man to come before me. It's God's appointments for man. He laid them all out. He laid them all out in Leviticus 23, and he went into the Jubilees every 50-year cycle and in uh, up from t Leviticus 23 up to, to Leviticus 25, counting the Jubilees, and, and you have the ability to calculate out the time that we're talking about right here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. I mean, you can get, you can get at it. What's that going to help you? I mean, the thing that's going to help you is a right relationship with God, that you hear his voice. I mean, the Bible starts out with God walking, his voice walking in the garden with Adam daily. I mean, when, when Eve ate and Adam ate, they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves and everything, and they hid themselves, but yet Adam heard God walking in the garden. You hear God walking? In the garden? I mean, do you feel the presence of God? I mean, because he loves every single person here. 
There's not one person in here that God would reject if they rightly came to him and repented, turned around, broke off the worldly, uh, unrighteous worldly ties and said, Lord, I'm yours. I'll wait. Lord, I'm yours. I'm waiting on you. I'll do what you lead me to do day by day. I'll be a witness because it's your purpose that I witness of the change in my life that happened 34 years ago this coming October. I'm witness of the change because I was unsavable. I thought, I mean, I, I, I thought I was done some bad things in my life that, that I canceled my salvation out. I thought I was there. But God still picked me up out of the gutter. Amen. Huh? God still said, come on. You know, it's like I, like I said, you know, we preached, we preached uh, uh, an, uh, condemnation on, on, the, on the church world for years. Whenever we should have been preaching conviction because conviction says, come on. The Holy Spirit put his arm around and said, come on. We're going to do this a different way. We're going to do this my way. And he'll put his arm around you. And he'll say, honey, you're better than that. Or brother, you're better than that. Come on, let me teach you how to, how to live. He said, you know, Jesus himself in John 14 said he sent back a comforter. Why, would he, why didn't he say a schoolmaster? He said a comforter because you're going to need a comforter. Huh? Because you, you're like me. You messed up everything so bad. I mean, I'm ashamed of it. I messed it all up so bad I'm ashamed of it. But he says, as you see the day approaching, fail not to assemble yourselves. We have an identity crisis. Don't let this world tell you how God, our Father, looks at you. You see, this world will tell you how our our, this world, even, even the worldly uh, apostate church will tell you how God looks at you. I mean, they'll tell you, oh, God loves you and everything. How much are you going to put in my offering plate? Huh? That's what the, the, the apostate church will tell you. How much tithe can you give? If you can't. Tell me that you're going to give me 10% tithe. You can't join my church. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. I'm not telling you that. We've never, never done nothing like that. Whenever we started this thing, when I got saved, when I got saved, I knew that I owed God more than I could ever give him. Huh? I owed a debt that I couldn't pay. Huh? I owed a debt I couldn't pay. And he paid the debt he didn't know. Huh? He paid the debt he didn't know. All for you. I mean, look at the story of the prodigal son. You know, the only one that accused the prodigal son was the prodigal brother. Huh? The father didn't accuse him. He said, this is my son. And who I... You know, give him the ring of a sonship and put a put a put a new coat on him. But the son, the prodigal, said, "I'm not worthy, father, to come into your house. Just treat me as one of your servants, because you treat your servants better than I deserve." Huh? And and, and this, I'm telling you, I was I was telling Dennis. He called me this week, and I was telling him. I said, you know. All the church, everybody says, Lord, Lord, not going to enter in. Come on, that's what it says in Matthew chapter 7. Everybody says, Lord, Lord's not going to enter in. So the five foolish, I mean, they're, they're, they're the bride. They're the bride. They're, they're the sanctified. They're the, they're the ones, but they, they let the world creep in on them. They, they put something in front of God, even if it was themselves. Huh? I mean, we worship altars. I mean, we worship uh, uh, everything that, that, that man can come up with, we worship. 
I mean, we... Uh, identity. The world's telling us how God looks at us. And we're the only ones that can tell how God looks at us and we look at God. We're the only one can do that. We're the only one can do that because it's, it's not what you do in front of everybody that makes the difference. It's what you do when you're not around nobody. I mean, we think we can hide our iniquity from God. And we can't. We can't hide our sin from God. <clears throat> but our, our sin don't scare God. <clears throat> our sin don't scare God. You know, in, in 2 Kings chapter 18, 2 Kings chapter 18 talks about the story of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, now Hezekiah was categorized in the same ballpark with David. King David was a man after God's own heart. Hezekiah was, was in the same ballpark with, uh, with uh, David. In uh, chapter 18, verse 5 through 8, it says, um, He trusted in the Lord, God of Israel, so that after he was done, was uh, none like him. <sighs> Verse 5 says, He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah. Now he got, he got praised right there. From the category of being the king of Judah. Now, now David was the third king of Judah. David was the third king of Judah. Saul was the first king. And then, and then uh, when Saul and Jonathan was killed in battle, then the, the, the southern tribe, uh, the Jews put... Uh, the Jews put... Uh, one of son, Saul's sons, king over Israel, it was a one nation at that time, one kingdom, one Israel, one people, for seven years and six months. It's a type of the tribulation. The son that Saul of Saul that took king of Israel was a type of Antichrist for seven years and six months. They made David king over Hebron. Hebron was a city in Israel that was given to Caleb, which was representing the Jews, but he wasn't a Jew. He represented the tribe of Judah, but he wasn't, he wasn't an Israelite. He wasn't a Hebrew. He was one, his family came out of captivity. They, if you read... Numbers chapter 13, I believe it is, it tells you who his father was and what tribe they were of that associate, you run the references, uh, who they were. And so when, when Joshua and Caleb took the, the children of Israel into the promised land, Caleb asked for the mountain where the giants were in Hebron. And he took that mountain and the giants fled. The giants fled. And he 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 put his property markers down there. And th that's where David became king for seven years and six months. At the end of seven years and six months, the Saul's son was so bad that the Jews rose up and killed him and made David king of all of Israel, the whole gamut. And so we know the story of how David... Was a, was a man after God's own heart. When he died, he gave over the kingdom to Solomon. And Solomon started out well, but he didn't end well. He didn't obey God. So then came along after a few kings, then here Hezekiah comes. Hezekiah's mentioned in three, God, three of the Old Testament prophecies, 
uh, in Second Kings, in uh, in uh, Isaiah, and in Second uh, Chronicles. And so uh, Hezekiah was weak in the area of battle. That was where David was strong in. So Hezekiah. Uh, was weak in battle, so he made allegiance with uh, the northern tribes of Israel and, and, and almost lost his kingdom. So that tells me that we have to have a warring character. We have to have a warring character because the devil's out to destroy you. The world's out to destroy you. We have to have a warring character that we put God first in our imagination, in our mindset, in our allegiance, in our prayer life. It's like I said Sunday. If you fall down, get back up until you get it right. Keep getting back up till you get it right. Keep leaning on the Word of God. If you don't, if you can't lean on the Word of God, find you some some people like. Uh, Peter said, find some like-minded people that are trying their best to serve God and come under the strength of, of two or more and search the scriptures and pray. I mean, intercessory prayer is a great tool. Verse 5, did I read 6? I didn't read 6, did I? Uh, verse 5, trusted uh, Judah, none more. Verse 6 says, for he cleaved, he cleaved, he cleaved to the Lord. If, I mean, is that not simple? Cleaving to the Lord. Hezekiah knew that he had to have some help. Solomon knew he had to have help, and he asked for help. You see what happened to Hezekiah when God gave him 15 more years. He tried to make allegiance with his enemy, and took them in and showed them all the riches in the temple and, and caused Hez, uh, Nebuchadnezzar to desire the riches of the, of the temple of God. And, and he came and carried them away. It's the same type of timing as we went through this time. I mean, in 605 is when Nebuchadnezzar first came to, to Judah to carry them away and overcame them in 605. 19 years later, he came again because uh, Zedekiah listened to his false prophets instead of Jeremiah. And so, his, so Nebuchadnezzar, when he came and, and put down Zedekiah's reign, he, put, uh, he brought Zedekiah and his five sons in front of judgment in front of the temple in Israel. And he, put, he, he killed all five of the sons of Zedekiah in front of his face, and he told Zedekiah, that's the last thing you will see. Because he burned his eyeballs out, took him to Babylon, and imprisoned him till he died. Those are things that happen to you when you get unholy alliances, unrighteous connections with the world. You better lean on God. God said, as you see the, the day approaching, fail not to assemble yourselves. Right. Why we assemble ourselves? We're praying for a lost and dying world, church. Amen. I mean, like I said, Sunday, you can't kill a dead man. I died with Christ, and I'm risen with Christ because I'm waiting on the change that's going to happen when that trumpet sounds, and, and I trim my lamp. I'll be changed in the twinkle of an eye, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and you will be too. If you get yourself ready right now, I mean, we're, we're looking at, the, I mean, Pentecost is the 22nd of May, starting at sundown through the 23rd. You know, in, in Leviticus there, when it talks about Passover, some of the people weren't able to, to do the Passover. So in Leviticus 23, according to the Passover, it gives them another opportunity to, to, to do the Passover. 30 days later. So the same thing happened with Hezekiah because, you see, Hezekiah went to, went to the king of the ten tribes and made an allegiance with him and told him to come on over and let's do 
do uh, Passover because we weren't able to. It's kind of like Hanukkah. Hanukkah, they did Hanukkah, the, Ma the Maccabeans did because they did Hanukkah in December, the 10th month on the Hebrew calendar because they weren't able to when, when they were over, the temple was overthrown. So Hanukkah means dedicate, dedication. So they dedicated it again. So here they went back to the old law where Moses was given in Leviticus 23, and, and they said, let's do it again. Let's, let's do it again. And that's over in 2 Chronicles. And I'll go there just one second since I read verse 7 and 8. 7 says, And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote. See, on over here, the king of Assyria had done, took, and carried off the, the northern tribes, and now he's coming down against the, the southern tribe of Judah and Benjamin, and, and Hezekiah peeled off all the gold and all the silver off the temple of God and gave it to him as a ransom. But you see, you can't ransom and make a deal with the devil because he's still going to do it. And that's exactly what Zach, Zachariah Rice, or whatever the name of the Syrian king was, he said, but he still was going to come down and do it and besieged them and everything, and, and God uh, delivered them. God delivered them because uh, Elisha came and prophesied that the next day uh, a wheat would be sold for a penny, you know. And, and so uh, uh, Zach, uh, Elisha's servant that had been, uh, leprosy had came on, and his two sons were sitting at the gate and said, why suffer us here to waiting on these uh, series to come and kill us? Let's go out and maybe they'll feed us. Maybe they'll feed us or they'll kill us one. We're going to die anyway. Huh? That's what they reason. Here they're setting our leopards at the gate. And so here they go out in the desert to the army of the Assyrians, uh, uh, 800,000 or something, or uh, 180 something, 180,000 is what it was. 180,000 man army sitting out there surrounding uh, Judah to come and take them over, throw, throw them like he did every other kingdom around there. And so here, here uh, Gezi and his two sons go out there, and when they get out there, they ain't nobody there. I mean, all their gold, all their tents, all their animals, all of everything they had was sitting right out there for them to take. They got excited and started burying it in the sand. And then uh, Gazi came to himself and told his son, said, what are we doing? He said, there's more than enough here. So he took some of it and went back to the city and the, and the and the prophet or the the ruler that Hezekiah had uh, said uh, it ain't gonna happen. And so when it did happen, he fell dead. He fell dead. Why is it important for you to understand that God has all power? God has all glory, and God has a great plan. I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard. Neither has it entered into the mind of a person what great things God has in store for them that believe. I heard a guy preaching. He said, he said he called for somebody to get healed of a, whatever. There, he said the uh, word of knowledge came on. He had. He said the Lord just showed me that somebody's here that that God wants to heal. And he said this is the problem. And, and he said somebody came to him later. Said where's that at in the Bible? He said, it's in the eye, it's in the place where the eye hadn't seen. <laughs> That's worth that in the Bible. Huh? I hadn't seen. Huh? But God wants us to see. Because he's the same yesterday, day, and forever. And I, I've read to you and I've pointed out to you several times in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. It says, all things God's revealed to man is belongs to the church forever. 
not for a time then and canceled out and doing something different. It's all belongs to the church. It all belongs to the body of Christ. Read it. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Read it. The devil tell you it don't work. He, even the church say, well, that went out with the apostles. You know, I just found out one of, one of the disciples, one of the 12 disciples, you know, they had two names like uh, uh, Nathaniel and Bartholomew is the same person. Nathaniel and Bartholomew is the same person. Well, I just found out today that, uh, that Zac Zacchaeus, you know, we've made jokes about Zacchaeus was a wee, wee little man, climbed up in a tree, sycamore tree. Well, his, he's one, he, was, he became one of the disciples, one of the 12. Huh? I didn't know that. The guy that said it said he could prove it in the Bible. That he was one of them and gave his name. I don't remember which one it was though right now. Praise the Lord. I'll listen to that again. Hallelujah. Now, I was talking about having the second Passover. The second Passover that is talking about in, well, let me read eight. He smote the Philistines even to Gaza and the border uh, borders thereof from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. Now, Gaza's where the Palestinians are right now in Israel. And, and the scripture and prophecy says that, that Gaza will be forsaken. And it was forsaken. I mean, the Palestinians went out, out there and destroyed all the, all the crops, all the buildings, all of everything when they went over there because they didn't want to touch nothing that belonged to the Jews. So the second Passover, you know when it is? The second Passover is, uh, is uh, May the 2nd. So if we're lifted from this, uh, this uh, thing that you can't gather more than 50 people or, or 10 people or something, you have to have social distancing, then we might have Passover again May the 2nd. Huh? We might have Passover again May the 2nd. I want you to listen to, to Second Chronicles. Chapter 30. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel, and his princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently. Huh? Neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. I mean, it's there. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. That's what it said. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. So the posts went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. And be not ye like your fathers, and like your brethren, which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them. That If you turn again, listen, you heard it. If you turn again to your Lord, Jesus Christ, he will have compassion on you, and your children will benefit from it. You don't have much time. 
if the rapture if the rapture happens the 22nd 23rd of may at pentecost i'm talking 2020 if it happens the 22nd of may at pentecost according to the to the Enoch calendar. Now the Gregorian calendar has Pentecost at the 31st or 1st of June. But that's the Gregorian calendar. That was made by Pope Gregory. That's not God's calendar. That's not the timing that God's going to go on. It's the timing that God put in the beginning and it don't change. Amen. The Bible says God doesn't change. He don't change. So his compassion is still fresh for you because every day his mercy is brand new. And for us to be made brand new again. For us to be made brand new all over again today. That we can have a fresh start. I mean, whenever I was so lost, October the 12th, 1986, the Lord had been dealing with me for three weeks. The, and, and I made I made a promise to Judy we'll get in church. And so here I'm standing, holding holding the back of the pew, because the Lord's telling me come 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 to me, come to the altar. And He's telling me that in my mind, in my spirit, and I'm refusing. I'm 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 holding back. And another week went by. Same thing. I don't know what the preacher was preaching. The third week, I sat in the back about halfway in the sanctuary, about on this side at, at the church where we attended then. My stepfather was on the outside. My mother was sitting beside me. I was sitting beside her, and Judy was sitting beside me, and the kids were sitting beside her. The conviction came over me, and my, my forehead started sweating BBs. Convictions coming over me and the Holy Spirit saying to me, come today, right now. Right now. You better come right now. My mother was scheduled for surgery the next day for a carotid artery. She is 53. She was scheduled for surgery on her neck the next day, the 13th of, uh, set of uh, October. And so here I'm sitting there. The Holy Spirit's telling me, said, if you don't come, I'm going to take your mama tomorrow. My mama had been serving God since uh, 1975. She would have been fine. But you see, <clears throat> I went in tears, went to the altar in tears. Felt like the world came off my shoulders. I mean, I felt, I felt like a new person. We all, mom had five kids. Uh, I got an older brother, me, and my two, three sisters, Donna, and two other sisters. We all went to the hospital for mama, sat with her blunt memorial. We sat in the waiting room, surgery waiting room. The doctor, Dr. Henry Calloway, did the surgery on her carotid artery. Two or three years before that, she'd had the other side done. We thought it'd be simple. Me and my youngest sister, Dina, Stayed there in the waiting area, and everybody else went to work because the doctor came out and said, your mom done fine. She's in recovery. She'll be out through here in just about an hour. Me and Dina sat there. I saw the gurney coming down through there, through the windows. And uh, me and Dina went out in the hallway, and the nurses was there. Doctor went on his way, and so we saw mama there. She didn't respond to us. Whenever I looked in her eyes, they were glassy. While she was in recovery, they didn't get the blood thinner regulated into her blood. And she had a massive stroke. She was crippled on her right side. She couldn't talk no more. And they didn't think she was going to make it. We, her stroke caused all of her, all of her children. My older brother was in church, 
he was the only one in church. I'd just give my life to the Lord the day before. Donna, my other two sisters weren't serving God. But because she had that stroke, it caused all of us to come together to take care of Mama. Carried her. She went through therapy and was able to walk with a quad cane. She held his arm up like this. And it's poison the water. Poison the water. All that, all those years she was able to do that, she wouldn't miss church. Even in her worst shape, we carried her to church, rolled her in a wheelchair, picked her up and set her in the car, put her back in the wheelchair, took her into church till she passed away or till she went bed fast, bedridden and couldn't go anymore. But she was so dedicated to church, she wouldn't miss church for nothing. And because of her faithfulness and her commitment to the Lord, all of her kids, Dina drinks, she's, you know, she struggles. But Diane's a preacher, Donna's a preacher, and I'm a preacher. My brother's a deacon at Severe Heights. And when we did Mama's funeral, we stood there by the graveside, and I ministered her funeral. And Donna spoke at her graveside and said, said this right here, and I'll never forget it. She said, for 12 years, we thought we were taking care of Mama. But in reality, <laughs> Mama was taking care of us. Faithful to the end. Faithful to the end. I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm not into altar calls anymore. I used to think we had to have an altar call. Everybody had to come to the altar. And all this. I'm not into altar calls no more because people come to the altar and have an emotional event. Then they get up and they, they don't break off the unrighteous ties to the world or to ungodly people. And they're back right where they were. There has to be a change in your mind, just like I said Sunday. There has to be a change in your mind before the change of direction will work. I hope you change your mind today because we're out of time. And I see it approaching so fast. If, if God would, my prayer for you is that God would open your eyes up to the spiritual reality of eternity. And there's nothing in this world, no un unrighteous ties that you could gain in this world that's worth losing what God has in store for you. He loves you, and he's put, he wants to put his arm around you and go with you. He'll be a better husband to you. He'll be a better friend to you. He'll be better to you than just like Hannah. The husband said, am I not better to you than ten sons? But she wanted a son. Same spirit, God wants children. Will you be one of his sons or daughters? Make up your mind. If you make up your mind, 12, 12 disciples turn the world upside down. If you make up your mind, we can finish this thing well. Hmm? We can finish this thing well. If you become faithful to the Lord. If you'll be faithful to the Lord, he'll put you where you need to be. He'll lead you where you need to go. And he'll put the words in your mouth what you need to say. And he'll give you souls for your labor. And what did, this, what did, what did Second Chronicles say? If you will turn to the Lord, even your children will benefit. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to come before you, Lord. We pray for each other. Lord, I, I know that you love every single one of us equally. There's none, none greater and none smaller. You love us all just like you love David, just like you love uh, uh, all, of your, all of the patriarchs of the, the end. We're all sons and daughters of yours, and Lord... I pray that you'd help us to get focused on, on, on our eternal life because it has to start now. 
That's what born again means. And in John 3, 3, it says, if you're not born again, your name's not in the Lamb's book of life, and you'll never see God. Lord, we pray for each other, and we ask you for divine favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with us. Amen. Now, I'm not going to call everybody up. We're just going to pray over our prayer request, and I'll anoint them and put them up. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I hope that, that you make serving God your priority. That's, that's what he wants you to do. It's not what I want you to do. It's what he wants you to do. I pray for every one of you to make serving God your priority over anything. And if you make him your priority, you'll be faithful to assemble yourselves. It says if you're not born again, John 3, 3. Okay. Yeah. You know, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall be saved. Father, we just pray over these prayer requests tonight. Lord, I pray that we turn toward you and, and build our altar that we might serve you with all our might, that we might sow the seeds of salvation. And, Lord, we, we just ask you to deliver us from the iniquity of this world, that we might be faithful to you. We have asked you to uh, meet the needs, heal the sick, um, uh, help the lost. Lord, we pray that you send provisions for those that need provisions, and we'll give you the glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Love y'all. Hope to see you Sunday.